this morning. Uh, I want to talk about us being his jewels. So in Malachi 3, uh, the, uh, bef- the verses before the one I'm going to use the, to open with, uh, the people are talking about, some of them, about what profit or what use is it to serve God. They're not convinced that you know, they gain anything because the wicked were getting away with things. So they were you know, deducing all this and thinking it wasn't worth it. But there were ones who feared God That's right. mm-hmm. and spoke to one another and, says that, and it says that the Lord listened and heard them. And a book of remembrance was written for those who fear God and meditate on his name. So I want to pick up there in verse 17. It says, They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Uh, this word jewels actually literally translated means special treasure uh, or peculiar. Now, I used to always, you know, a lot of times the word peculiar in this day and time kind of means kind of odd or unusual, but maybe sometimes with a bad connotation. But it's, this is unusual or odd, but with a good connotation being, being the Lord's. And we are peculiar compared to the rest of the world. Uh, they, they think uh, that we are especially. Uh, there's also another time that God called his people special or a treasure, and that's uh, clear back in Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, verses six through eight. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love on you nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people, for you were the least of all peoples, but because the Lord loves you and because he would keep The oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So this is another time. And then to exemplify uh, this, he actually had the priests, like Aaron, wore the uh, uh, breastplate that had the 12 jewels representing the 12 tribes, which were his chosen people uh, in uh, sets of beautiful jewels. Now, jewels are not abundant everywhere. You know, we know that here in the earth. They are mined from deep within the earth. They take a lot of work to find them, and that's why they're very expensive. They're found in small quantities, and they're not so beautiful when first found in the raw state. Now, in comparison, God's jewels are not found everywhere either. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. It's from Second Chronicles there. And when he finds them, they are not always desirable in their, in their original condition. But he knows what he will fashion them into Amen. by his loving kindness through his son. Then he goes to work polishing them up through trials and hardships until they shine as lights in the world. And that scripture is from Philippians 2. I want to read that. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Uh, verses 14 and 15. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Uh, That image, that picture there of shining as lights is just like a a jewel, a diamond, you know, wood. And then um, also in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.5, it speaks of that we are sons of light and sons of the day. There's another place that I want to focus on is talking about light is in Revelation 21, and that's like say what Brother Tony mentioned this morning. And this is the bride of Christ, which is uh, the jewels I'm talking about, which is us, that he's building together. Um, it's verses 9 to 11. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And this light is the same word that's also used as the lights in the ones I just read from Philippians and uh, from Thessalonians. So this light is uh, indicative of his people and, you know, displayed in these jewels coming forth from the jewels. Uh, It's a picture of, of his people. Uh, Later on down in the same chapter in Revelation, we see more jewels are mentioned, and this is in each foundation, each with a different jewel, you know, that is being built there, uh, sapphires, emeralds, topaz, there's many more mentioned there in uh, some of the verses 18 through 20. Uh, I want to skip down to 23, though, and read that one. It says, the city had no need of sun or the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. Now, this is the source of the light. And when he is within us, of course, then that same light is coming forth from us. And so we as his people, 
uh, exude this light that he has put in us. So this, this is all connected here with, with us being his jewels is, is what he has done in us, we can see. It's not from our own. Well, that's already been talked about this morning, too, in our Bible lesson. It's not anything that we have done. So I want to go back now to our original text in, in Malachi, and uh, the, one, the verse just below that. He mentions another aspect of this. He says in verse 18, Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. And we've talked about this already too. And so you see clearer the closer you get to God, the distinction, you know, the difference that he makes. It's not just um, everyone the same and, and it doesn't matter what you do and it doesn't matter, you know, about this or that. I and mean, that's what the world would lead you to believe. But it is very distinct. He's made it very clear in many passages in the, it, throughout the scriptures we could read for a long time. I want to go back to that text in Deuteronomy and read further there, uh, verses 9 through 11. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. And he repays those who hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack with him who hates him. He will repay. So there he's, he's very distinct and clear there, but he, God has not changed. Right. He's the same uh, as we see in Revelation here at the end. And uh, the same chapter, going back up to verse 6, he says, And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to those who thirst. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, ab abominable, murderers, sexual, immor 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 immoral, I'm sorry, sor sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So he's very specific. Uh -huh. and, and this is the end, you know, after all the other times. This is the New Testament, New Covenant. Everything is the same. I mean, he thinks it the same way. It's just that he has sent Jesus to be able to help us to be what he wants us to be, where he, we can inherit all things and come to him and uh, be deserving of this. Um, you are one of his jewels, and that's what I want to, wanted to bring all this to light so that this will be an encouragement to your faith, so that you will uh, just be reminded of whose you are. And uh, this is an assurance that Brother Ricky was talking about, to know that we are, we are his. Um, if you are in Christ and if you love and honor his Father, and this is the, this is the stipulation that it's not like we just talked about, um, it's just a you know a schedule of things that you go through or traditions of things that you walk through. But it, it is from the heart that you really do love him and that you obey him because of that love. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, you know another confirmation of that you are his. So I want us to sing this um, old hymn, Jewels, page 511 in your mm -hmm. hymnal there. And um, the words are really good here just to kind of recap just cap, uh, everything together here. And I know we don't usually do it this time, but... It should be an extra song. I'm not taking away from Sister, <laughs> Sister Tosh's song service. It's just an extra we're throwing in here. So, so 511. All three verses. When he cometh, when he cometh to make up his jewels, all his jewels, precious jewels, I'll open with prayer and then Sister Tasha will come with more singing. <laughs> 